we're going to talk about barn owls. Um, we call it their superpower because they use their ears to see. Okay, so for this, we'll push y'all flat. Okay, so how do other animals figure out where sounds come from? So if any of you have multiple pets in the house, you may have noticed that each species reacts to sound very differently. Um, so for example, cats and horses rotate their heads entirely, or rotate their ears, sorry, towards the sounds, uh, much like the horse is doing in this clip um, of the screen. Um, so they'll rotate their ears and then their head will follow. Uh, dogs perk their ears and point their head in the direction they think the sound came from, allowing more sound waves into the ears. Um, a lot of times when your dog hears something, you notice they kind of stiffen up and straighten up and their ears go directly up to the sky. So that's allowing more sound waves to come in and they'll get a better idea of where that noise is coming from so then they can go find it. Um, for people, we tilt our heads in the direction of the noise. So when someone's talking to you from behind you or from the right side of you, you tend to kind of angle your head a little bit, pointing that ear more towards where uh, the conversation's coming from or where the noise is coming from. And that also allows, you know, sound waves going directly to that ear and you know exactly where they're at. You can hear them better. Um, for bats, on the other hand, um, they scream and then listen in return using echolocation to find where that sound is coming from. So they'll hear it they'll look toward it, they'll make a noise, and it'll bounce off using that echolocation. Let's see. So why barn owls? Um, these owls are everywhere. Uh, these are the most commonly widespread land birds in the world, um, except for in colder climates. They're obviously not going to be in like the Arctic. Um, Let's see. So these owls can hunt in total darkness. So it can be pitch black. You know, you're kind of walking through your house. It's pitch black. You have to kind of fill on the walls. So they can't fill on walls. They can't fill on anything. So they solely rely on their super hearing um, to figure out where things are, where they're going. And they're actually able to hunt just as well um, in total darkness as they are during the day because of their ears. Um, they can actually hear up to 10 sounds a second where we as humans can barely even hear that one little tiny sound in a second. Um, so that's where they have super hearing. It's like super speed. So these owls are highly active at night when hunting, so their eyesight is greatly hindered, causing them to rely on their ears to tell them exactly where their prey is hiding. Um, their eyes are fixed, which means in order to look around for the prey, they have to completely turn their head. They can't just like look off to the side like we can. Um, so this, they have to turn their head to change their field of view. They're silent hunters, making it to where they're easily able to sneak up on their prey, giving them an easy hunt. They also tend to hunt uh, small, timid animals that are quiet, so they avoid detection from not only that animal, but any other possible prey around them. Because they have to rely on that hearing, they don't want other animals to hear them, so then they can just easily go grab some more. So their ears are not um, physically uh, the same as ours as far as outer structures. They actually just have little holes on the side of their heads um, in order to allow for better aerodynamics when flying. So in order to protect those, there's small flaps um, on the outside of their ears that consolidate the sound waves as well. They also have specialized feathers around their ears, uh, kind of creating like this funnel uh, that, that funnels the sounds towards the ear. Their ear asymmetry has evolved three times throughout um, the species lifespan. Um, so with that, it makes it to where the left ear is actually higher on their head than the right ear is going to be, which little cool thing here. So the left ear hears everything that is above the owl when they're flying. So anything that is coming from above the owl, whether it's other birds, whatever is above the owl, the left ear is going to hear that. While the right ear is going to focus on any sound coming from below the owl, making it so when they're flying, if they hear something from below them, they know exactly to go below them from that right ear. If they hear something above them, they know exactly to go over there from that left ear. It's a makes it a better um, accuracy to pinpoint exactly where their prey may be hiding. Sorry about that. My computer's freaking out a little bit, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, guys, so I want you to 
cup your hand over one of your ears and then turn your head towards your speakers and if you're listening you can think about where you hear that sound coming from right now like try maybe close your eyes try to visualize exactly where you would assume that i am speaking to you from and then you're going to turn your head again still cupping the same ear and see if there's any noticeable difference just if you guys can still visualize me at exactly the same relative area in your room what i would expect you to do is to kind of not quite be able to place it as well as normally where i'm speaking to you and it's coming through both ears clearly because your brain inputs that information and it uses your relative position to both uh both openings and it creates the whole mental picture from that so owls are the same way uh, they just do it a little bit differently because they're also working in 3d while they're flying it's pretty cool when you get back when you get down into it there we go slideshow doesn't want to work with me at all okay <laughs> so I know this looks really complicated but I promise you it is actually not so you've got your bird ear on the left and your human ear on the right. And if you look, that big squiggly thing up top on the bird, that's going to be um, that's going to be the canals. And if you go over to the human, the light blue, exact same structure. It just looks a little bit different. So that's going to be part of your inner ear. Uh, there's also the cochlear right underneath, both of them. And then you've got your middle ear canal uh, on both and the external ear or the ear opening. So when you look, it's really, really not that different. Like. There's a lot of similarities across animals within the animal kingdom that you just wouldn't think about when you look at them in nature. And because owl hearing is so good and especially barn owl hearing, like barn owls are a model species for being able to visualize through their ears we're actually using them as the basis for a lot of really cool technology uh, we've been using we've been studying their hearing for decades now uh, in all sorts of different fields uh, the big one right now is that we just recently discovered a brand new way to test for hearing loss in very, very young kids. It's so young that like they don't even understand language. We, we studied exactly how owls respond to sounds visually with like they'll turn their heads their eyes will widen you will see that if there's a sound that they like they know exactly what's going on and we learned that that's different pitches that causes that so like if it's a pitch that's real real high it sounds like food they're going to respond very favorably to that if it's a pitch that's very low, they're going to be less interested. So we applied that same principle to testing babies for hearing loss. And we learned same concept. They also love higher pitches 
because generally when you're talking to a baby and you're talking to them adoringly, you're going to use a baby voice. And the baby voice is going to be just a little bit higher than your normal voice. So they recognize that you are friendly, that you are something that they can feel safe around, and they respond positively to that. So using that concept, we're able to figure out if babies have hearing loss way earlier than ever before. And when we know that early, we can correct a whole lot easier. And even if we aren't able to do that, because maybe they were too old at the time we started implementing this, we are also using the way that their brain recognizes the input from their ears to create much better hearing aids. Like, barn owl hearing is really, really cool, and we are constantly learning more from it. We're even using it for nanotechnology. Not a lot of people know exactly what nanotechnology is, but you know when you hear nanotechnology, it's going to be really, really complex and cutting edge, and it's going to be really cool. We're going we're gonna to make smaller, better computers that are going to do all sorts of things that basically exist in sci-fi movies right now. Uh, and it's just a matter of time before we start seeing that in our daily lives. In summary, you should learn more about barn owls because they are definitely one of the coolest animals out there.